West Michigan to protect and alert you. This is News Channel 3, live at 5. A good evening. Court dates have now been set for the 16 Michigan Republicans who are accused of creating a false slate of electors and forging documents to overturn the election of Donald Trump in 2020. And our political reporter Rachel Louise Just has more on the fallout of those felony charges Republican officials and activists are facing. Court records indicate more than a dozen Republicans are expected to appear in a Lansing court on August 10th to face eight charges each over the alleged fake elector plot. Attorney General Dana Nessel says these 16 people coordinated an effort to sign documents falsely claiming they had the authority to declare the election for Trump based on disproving claims that the 2020 election in Michigan was fraudulent. Former MIGOP Chair Sola Nuzis tells me he believes Nessel, a Democrat, is making a political decision by going after Republicans. I think this is a gray area. I think it's very unfortunate, and I think it's unfortunate that it's being politicized. After radio silence for the last nearly 24 hours, the state Republican Party responded in an unattributed tweet essentially echoing what Anuzis had to say. Where there is overwhelming evidence of guilt in respect to multiple crimes, the most political act I could engage in as a prosecutor would be to take no action at all. Political science professor Paul Rizicki says politicization can't be ruled out. I think it's a possibility, but I don't know that for a fact. Most of the false electors have a history in government or political roles around the state. A Republican National Committee woman, a Grand Blank school board member, the mayor of Wyoming, a board of trustees clerk, and a former county GOP chair, just to name a few. Mishan Maddock, who was the number two Republican Party leader in Michigan in January, has also been charged. These are folks who hold some real positions of responsibility. I reached out to every elector today. They either didn't respond back, couldn't be reached, or hung up the phone when I identified myself as a reporter. Nestle state charges may not be the end of the road, though. I think you can make a real good case for federal charges. In fact, I would say maybe in one sense the federal charges might be more important because it is a federal election. Some legal experts have predicted Trump could also face federal charges over his alleged involvement, too. Six other states also had alternate elector slates. Michigan is the first state to bring charges. Well, Western Michigan University is now offering a new artificial intelligence writing course, and that starts this fall. At WMU is adapting, it says, to the use of new modernized technology to be able to enhance students' skill sets, both inside and out of the classroom. News Channel 3's Autumn Pitcher spoke to a professor of the course about why he believes the class will be an asset to Western and will shift the future of learning. Autumn. Yes, even though some are worried about this new technology, Professor Brian Gogan believes it will be an asset to learning. Now, he will be teaching students in different career paths on how to use this new technology in their own fields. As new artificial intelligence technology is evolving, WMU wants to stay ahead of the curve by introducing it in the classroom. I think this is the last class of graduating students who aren't going to see this as something that's happening in their workplace or in their world. And so if we don't use it in our classrooms or we're not talking about it, um, then we aren't preparing them for, for life beyond um, higher ed. Brian Gogan, associate professor of English at WMU, put AI writing in response on the books in June. This class is kind of part of a, a wider and broader university initiative to really offer classes across the university that allow for engagement with AI. We want to take it to the next level and offer a class a little bit more sustained engagement with this topic. The new course receiving an assortment of interests. A lot of individuals have been contacting me really wondering what the class can do for them and how it can kind of assist them in their own kind of professional pursuits. Students will have the chance to explore how written communication is impacted by AI tools along with learning how to use it in their own field. These students will really uh, have the opportunity to put their own thoughts, their own workflows, their processes, their protocols to the test. For example, assisting a teacher with lesson plans. It was important for me to make sure that our students had a competitive edge moving into the workforce. Enter just a prompt asking the uh, tool to write five case scenarios that can be used with college students. It's essentially responding to the assignment that I gave it. So it's teaching you and you're teaching it at the same time. Right, and that's where this idea of a thought partner comes into, uh, into play. Although the virtual assistant is in question, some worried about the elimination of critical thinking skills and creativity. It still needs your lens 
um, to contextualize, to put in your experience, your examples, to make connections. Other professors at the university voicing concerns over cheating on tests. It doesn't do a great job of detecting. Even the software created by OpenAI can't detect very well um, AI-generated content. Um, and if you run is it back that, through... Yeah, is that concerning? Um, I think a lot of instructors find that concerning. Like We don't know where it will go, and I think we're all learning together. The university is pushing professors to adapt the new tool in their classrooms. However, Gogan tells me it is up to the specific professor on whether or not they decide to use it or not. Now, this course is being offered to graduate, undergraduate, and non-WMU students who are simply interested in the new technology. We will have more resources on how they can register on our website, WWMT.com.